back. Um, just about done in this field. I had a little problem. I guess it's a good problem to have. I brought four wagons to this field, just six acres, and I thought, oh, it should all go on there. Well, yeah, it went on there with with uh, two thirds of a bin here and uh, another three quarters of a round to go. So it's making better than I thought it would, which I guess I'm not going to complain. I got the tractor out. I already hauled this wagon and the one that was hooked to it to the mill. And I thought I better just dump this off and get the last bit done before I haul any more just so I can as the field's starting to get real greasy now. Uh, the first load I took, uh, that wagon and the, uh, the other one's back behind. A little smaller wagon. I had like 300 and, or 300, 437 bushel, uh, 55 something test weight, which is better than I thought it'd be, and 20.2 uh, uh, I think on the moisture, which was drier than I thought it would be. I tested this field two weeks ago on a Saturday, and it was it tested 23. Now I had some ears that were on the ground and threw in that and this and that, so it wasn't all, you know. I go through the whole field too. I don't know how most guys do it, but I'll actually walk the field, walk like a circle, and catch. I don't go right on the edge. I don't go right in the middle. I kind of go in about 20 rows and just make a circle and try and get it that way. Um, but anyhow, I hope everybody had a happy Thanksgiving. Uh, I know I did. I ate plenty. I uh, was had no problem coming out here today and jumping up and down on stuff and moving around to burn a few calories because I ate plenty. I'd ate more, but I didn't have room. So anyhow, let's go out here and try and get this last three quarters of a round. I'm glad I started when I did. I, w I almost wish I'd have started an hour earlier, but with the house is close, I didn't really want to be making too much noise before seven, waking people up, and ticking people off. I'm sure most of these people are used to a little noise, but I didn't want to didn't want to push the issue. There's a wet spot right there. There was water laying. I went right through that. Didn't even hardly track it up but that was earlier when it was colder it's supposed to get up to 50 today and it's sunny and windy it's it's well on its way there I can tell you that but I'm just on the short round here on the field I am running the GoPro too. I'm trying to get some different stuff. I got a shot in the tank and I've got a I've got it right there on the top of the engine. Hopefully that thing doesn't vibrate too much. Just a little different perspective. Because I'm sure these glasses aren't the greatest. I like the glasses because you can when you're talking, you, you can hear real clear. Sometimes the picture on the computers, usually when I airdrop it to my iPad, it looks real nice, but I've noticed putting them on uh, YouTube, they've been a little fuzzy. And I don't know if I can go in those settings on that thing and, and change that or not, but I try to upload it in HD, and I don't know if that matters or not. I'm sure soybean farmer Ted Kaler could enlighten me on that question. Ted's had them longer than I have, and soybean farmers are pretty particular about reading up on things to get the ins and outs. So, anyhow, another thing I noticed 
I went over 300 subs here recently. So I'd like to thank anybody that watches these videos and is subbed. Thank you. I, I mean, I just, I just do this for fun. I have no intentions of ever trying to make a career out of YouTube. I just like to see whatever other people are doing and how they do it and then just kind of give you how I do it and what I think. So for everybody that's subbed, thank you. I really appreciate it. I never thought that uh, it would turn out the way it's turned out. I know my nothing I do here is top quality. It just kind of is what it is. Uh, but somebody must like it, so I'll try and keep making stuff. It's going to get a little lean here. I don't anticipate doing any tillage. For one, it's this weather's just been crazy. And two, uh, I'd like to maybe no-till some corn next year. So a couple fields I'm not anticipating messing with. I just want to go in in the spring and no-till corn after some beans. I don't know what I'm going to do with this field yet. This field's kind of off by itself. I guess the only reason I put corn here this year was because I had I only had one other cornfield and I didn't want it to be by itself. And they are the two fields that are furthest away from each other so that other cornfield is close to my friend where he he had 50-50 corn and beans. Um, but this field's kind of couple miles from where I had all my beans and I was going to leave it beans. It was beans last year. I was going to leave it beans, but I'm kind of glad I put corn in here now. This is done way better than I ever anticipated. I wish the moisture was a lot drier, but for being planted June 20th, or June, 20, June 1st, in the summer we had, I'd say 20% is probably not too horrible. I know there's other you guys that shell corn a lot wetter. So, not usually, most years I'm right around that, if I can get it under, hair under 20, I'll go. That uh, other field I had, it was 20, 20 point something, and that was planted two weeks before this and harvested a couple of weeks ago. So I guess if it would have waited till now, it may have been maybe 17 or 18, but I don't know. It is what it is. I didn't want this corn standing good, and as late in the year as it is, I, I'm surprised we've had the weather we've had by now, or till now. Cause it could be a whole lot worse. So while it was standing and the weather was nice, I had a day off to get it shelled and get it hauled. I figured I better just go ahead and do it. I didn't want to wait till it froze. I don't like shelling corn around Christmas or in January, so. But there's lot, this is a field I, I did a planting video, some tillage, and a couple of updates, and uh, it hasn't disappointed. It looked good back around when I planted it. I think it was two weeks later I made an update of it coming up. It looked good then, and then the 4th of July when I did the update, it looked pretty good then. It was a little, there's a couple spots where you could tell it was going to be lean, but not too bad and now it's just this is probably some of the better corn I've had in the last few years in fact two years ago I had corn in this field and I think I went 170 around 170 that year in 2015 but what happened was I think the reason it did so well that year this was the last I broadcast urea 
before I planted that year instead of having them spray the 28 on and this was the last field I did and I didn't have it set right or they they set it at the L or at the co-op but they're never right when you have that dry fertilizer and I usually open it up a hair and I didn't and I went and went and went and then I got into this field and I had a bunch left and I went over the field once, opened it, went over the field twice, had to open it again, finally got it emptied out. And so this field had a crap ton of urea on it. I think that's kind of why it did so well. Well, that should be cleaned out. I'm going to turn that separator off. But this year, I actually, I couldn't tell a difference from one half to the other, but where we just finished up, I had the planter set at like, I should have been putting on around 240 to 250 in the row of uh, 923.30. Uh, and then I thought I was going to run out, so about somewhere out in the middle here, I, I choked it down to around 220. It should have been putting on around 220. Now, I couldn't tell the difference in this field. It seemed like it made pretty good everywhere. So I don't know if that screwing around with that backing that fertilizer off hurt me or not I can't tell that it did anyhow I hope these couple videos with the glasses weren't too shaky I better turn that GoPro off I'm gonna shut it down I'm gonna try and splice what I try and splice together what I got with that because it took I think it I don't know how long it went but it shut down and then it started itself back up when I had it in the tank or showing the tank and then that video I just shut off was over eight minutes so I'll probably have my son help me edit that splice it together let's get this thing unloaded good I may have some custom work yet, I'm not sure, I gotta call the guy. Um, I'm thinking that some of the ground he had corn in was low, lays lower than this ground did. Um, it's over near my friend's ground, it's probably within a mile. He, he had 20 acres, and I don't know if he still has 20 acres, because he was picking some, but he wanted to shell some, and he's on wide row. Uh, 33 inch rows but he has a 444 John Deere corn head and it should fit on this machine I used to run a 443 on this one and it fit so hopefully his 444 fits if he still wants me to take some corn off for him I told him he stopped a couple weeks ago I said yeah if I have time after work or in the weekend it suits I'll I'll come and do it so I got to give him a call and find out on that. If I get that, I don't know if I'll take any video or not. I may or I may not. So anyhow, that's going to do it on this one. Uh, we'll chat with you guys later.